Hey guys, Dantix here. The XCOM series is known for its meme-tastic, rage-inducing moments when you miss a 99% chance to hit at point-blank range and lose Sir Flapjack into the third. <laughs> you were so young. But then, there's so much more to this turn-based strategy game. You're forgiven if you haven't heard, as there's been barely any marketing, but a new title is being launched on April 24th. XCOM Chimera Squad. So in this video, I'm going to go through the differences between XCOM 2 and this new release, what's changed, what to expect, and hopefully give you a better idea if you should pick this game up for the low price of $9.99. I'm going to go through changes to combat, including new alien squad members and initiative, breaching, tactics, removal of permadeath androids, and more. Let's start with a bit of background. XCOM Chimera Squad is set five years after the events of XCOM 2. Earth is liberated, and the remaining aliens and humans are living together in a state of flimsy harmony. We all know how this trope is going to play out. If you don't, you really need to watch literally any sci-fi movie or play literally any sci-fi game. Basically, humans are racist, xenophobic morons. All except Ashley Williams, okay? She, she just gets a bad rap. So this harmony is under threat in City 31, and that's where the Chimera Squad comes in. A ragtag group of humans and aliens alike, tasked with keeping the peace while facing a brand new threat. The coronavirus, I mean, bad stuff I can't talk about. You aren't flying around different parts of the map, which was frankly one of the least appealing parts of XCOM 2 for me, but instead you'll be based in a HQ in City 31. Your role will be to keep the city anarchy low and ultimately unify the people by eliminating all the threats. This part of the game has just as much strategy as the combat as your choices here will impact how everything plays out. There are 9 districts in City 31 and all of these have their own unrest meter. Your job will be to keep these low as if they rise too high, the total city anarchy meter grows. If it reaches the end, you lose the whole campaign and will need to restart or reload. You can do this by participating in missions in the districts, placing security and more. You can also undertake investigations to speed up the process towards critical missions. There's a ton that I won't cover here for spoiler reasons, but it's not as simple as it seems. So you chose the investigation mission in the Stax district. It will lower unrest by two, net you a small cash reward and speed up operations revealed by two days. Then you pick your squad, keeping in mind synergies and their loadout, any androids that will sub in when a squad mate is downed and you're on your way. You aren't the resistance fighting an overwhelming force anymore. You're a SWAT team of sorts, tasked with keeping the city safe, and with that come significant changes to combat. Before starting, you'll have an opportunity to set up how you want to breach. Here you can decide your agent's turn order, which we'll discuss soon, and where they enter the battle from, giving them particular advantages and disadvantages. So in this mission, if they enter from the first side window, they will have decreased visibility, but from the second, they will surprise the enemies, making shots during the breach stun targets. So maybe you would have an agent that can hit multiple targets, like Blue Blood breach through here. Some breach points can only be accessed by particular agents like the Viper Torque, who can use her slender snake body to get through the ventilation easily. Each mission will be in a different area and therefore have different breach points to consider. There is more strategy in XCOM Chimera Squad's combat than previous iterations because of the breach mode and because of the fact each squad member and enemy has initiative. No longer do you take all your turns at once, then let your enemy take all of theirs. During the breach phase, your squad has a chance to complete all their actions, but after that, turns alternate. Your first agent takes their turn, then the first enemy, then your second agent, and so on. This adds another dimension to strategy. You won't be able to take out everyone, so maybe prioritize the enemies whose turn is coming up next. Getting a kill will mean your next agent will move right after. Then maybe use your one-time team-up ability to move one of your agent's turns up to the top and allow you to double up on an enemy or correct a critical mistake like missing a key target or stabilizing a fallen ally. This dimension adds quite a bit to the tension and a lot to the strategy as you'll have more of a challenge but in turn can adapt quicker than ever before. You'll definitely feel the pace increase. Your squad isn't limited to humans in this iteration. If you played XCOM 2, you may remember just how annoying Vipers can be, using their long tongues to pull your squad mates way out of position, then disabling them with an Arbok like a rap attack. Well, now you can give your enemies a taste of their own poison with the Agent Talk. 
she comes equipped with many abilities to reposition enemies and allies, as well as poison enemies, and uh, I'm sure she's a great kisser. Then we have two hybrids, Zephyr and Cherub, both utilizing strength far beyond that of regular humans. Zephyr with her hand-to-hand -hand specialty and Overwatch that does huge damage if enemies get close or try to move away from her, and Cherub's tankiness, shields which support the whole squad and buffs. We have Axum the Muton, who is based around high damage smash attacks that can break cover, charge enemies, create quakes, and so on. You don't want mutants getting close to you in XCOM 2, and your enemies won't want Axum getting close in Chimera Squad. Think Hulk when you think Muton. Then finally, we have Verge the Sectoid. These were always critical targets to take down in XCOM 2, as they could manipulate the battlefield in ways that was hard to recover from like mind controlling your allies and raising the dead. Agent Verge is much the same, using powerful psionics and manipulating enemies, much like my ex. <laughs> then we have regular human agents, but I'll save a team breakdown for another video. You must be thinking, Dan, these are named squad mates and they seem limited. What happens if they die? Well, first, great question. Second, there's no permadeath save for androids. If one of your squad mates takes critical damage, they'll be put into a down state. If your squad doesn't stabilize them, they will die and the mission will need to be restarted. Even if they are stabilized though, they will be unconscious for the rest of the mission and the android will need to take their place. This is quite the serious departure from classic XCOM that I'm sure many of you are on the fence about or straight up disapprove of. After all, naming your agents, changing their background and how they look is part of the appeal of XCOM as you can make a squad out of you and your friends. Then laugh when Billy gets shot in the face because everyone hates Billy anyway. I don't know about you, but in my first couple of playthroughs of XCOM and XCOM 2, I would simply reload a quick save when one of my squad members gets hit or downed anyway. So I just see this as a simpler way to save scrub. With mods, I'm sure Iron Man mode will be introduced. I do miss the ability to customize my squad though. The silver lining is each squad mate has an interesting personality and backstory that is explored throughout the campaign. The sectoid agent Verge, for example, was sent to Earth and tasked with manipulating humans through psionic means. This connection was powerful, but also had the side effect of making him develop empathy for us disgusting meatbags. So when a squad mate receives damage of any kind, there's a chance they will develop scars. One such scar makes your character sluggish and it will reduce your dodge by 15. If you find this too hindering, you can utilize the training command back at HQ. Alongside unlocking the true potential of your squad mates, you can also remove their scars. Heightened reflexes, for example, removes the agent's sluggish scar. Any form of training takes time though, so your agent might be out of action for a mission or more. Like mentioned, if an enemy is downed, you can utilize androids which fill in the void for said agents. These androids can be customized and upgraded, but won't have those juicy abilities like Torque's Rap Attack or Cherub's Harden. There's more of a focus on abilities this iteration, so it's quite the hindrance. Abilities are designed to have synergies and combos with each other. One such example is Agent Shelter's ability to swap friends and foes positions, standing next to an Overwatch Zephyr and swapping with an enemy, triggering the powerful Overwatch melee attack or Cherub's ability to buff damage for a turn and Agent Blueblood's ability to hit multiple targets for big damage. Each individual agent will have more skills than ever before. Here we see Agent Patchwork with eight abilities she brings with her to battle. No doubt large selections will literally and metaphorically open doors in combat. Alongside abilities are equipment, much like there was in other XCOM titles, but expect much more variety as you can research new blueprints, buy items from the supply, which will always have items for you to purchase, or the scavengers market, which has more exotic goods, but is only open on particular days. You can visit the assembly to research, which functions like research in other XCOM titles, but you can also create items from here from resources you collect and sell them at the supply or just use them in combat. Research modular weapons, for example, unlocks the ability for your agents to equip a weapon mods and lets you make auto loaders, stocks, and expanded magazines. Now, if you have spare agents not doing anything, you can send them on their own private missions in the spec ops section of the HQ. Here you can gain more money, find items, lower unrest, and more. Each take a set amount of time to complete. 
So that's all I have for you today. What do you think about XCOM Chimera Squad? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell as YouTube is being quite angry at me lately and I'd really appreciate it. I'll be back very soon with more XCOM and other RPG content. Ciao friends.